All right, two things. Yes, I really do have a BMW with the tag AI pays. And the second thing is I hate wasting time. So I'm gonna give you these timestamps here uh, for you to go through the video to find what you're interested in and deploying white labeled AI voice into go high level. Uh, this was something I sent out to our users for an update for our new voice engine that allows for inbound calling, outbound calling, as well as web calling uh, through iframes on your funnel. So there's a no obligation way for, for them to call you and collect information. It's a great prospecting tool, uh, but enough talking. Again, I don't like to waste time. Let's just get right into it. All right, AI voice calling assistance update. This is the perfect add-on to the chat assistants that operate in SMS, GMB, IG, Facebook, WhatsApp, all the native channels in high level. Now we can encompass voice with that too. So with this update comes a few uh, new features in here, a, a new assistant type and even a new deployment type to be able to get that assistant out into the wild to call your leads and uh, even use iframes as lead magnets. So let's just get started here. Uh, we'll start in phone number. So this is a new tab where you're able to buy a phone number directly through Twilio. Uh, through us, you put in your area code, we'll purchase the number for you and then assign that to your account. If you are outside of the US and Canada, you can import a number if you already have a Twilio number yourself, or you go get a Twilio number and import it through us um, if you're outside of the US and Canada. If you are inside the US and Canada, you can just buy a number here. Once you buy a number, uh, you could buy as many as you want. There's no limits on it. You'll have this number in your account. You can assign it to a voice assistant once you have it created. We'll come back here. Uh, just know that we have phone numbers and you need a phone number for a uh, assistant to be able to call. So now, under assistance, we have a new assistant type. Uh, we have chat and we have voice. So we walk into new assistance and then we see now multi-channel voice here. When we click on that, we get a new voice assistant. Um, walking into that, I'll go to the one I already have built out. So we're able to really, really, really granularly manage these voice assistants to be as robust as possible rather than just a LLM chatting back and forth with leads and uh, not really actionably doing anything and, and not being super customizable. So. Uh, we start in the configure tab here where we can give it a name. Uh, we can select a voice from the suite of voices and this will expand. And then we can select any of these languages here that we operate in for our ICP, um, our ideal customer profile. And then we'll have um, an outbound number, which will be the phone number we have here. So this is if we're calling to the assistant to make an outbound call, what number are they gonna use? We assign it there and then transfer number. This is pulled automatically from your sub location once you create a voice assistant, but we're able to change that down here. We just edit and then you can choose your country code, put in the transfer number and save there. Okay, um, and then once you have a phone number, if this is the one that you want uh, you know, to be assigned to that phone number for outbound, uh, you assign the number here, save it, and you're good to go. Next, we go to advanced. If you are in the medical space or HIPAA, uh, HIPAA compliance is something that is a concern for you and your clients, we do have HIPAA compliance with these voice assistants. So what this will what this will do is when this is enabled, no logs, no recordings, no transcripts will be stored. All of that data will just be uh, summarized for you in a call log and just saying that there was a call made to this number from this number, um, just with an analysis over it. Um, we have recording enabled, and of course, you know when HIPAA is on, that cannot be off. Um, Silence timeout. So what this is going to be is how many seconds of silence does the assistant wait before ending the call on its own? In a situation where someone may be playing with your AI, uh, you may be getting ghosted, someone who's not interested, after uh, however many determined seconds, the assistant will just automatically end the call. Response delay is the same thing. Uh, response uh, delay as far as the voice engine, response delay as far as the LLM, you're able to customize that a little bit more. Obviously, latency is going to be the most important for people, so we're just going to keep that low. So number of words to interrupt the assistant, so we're able to granularly manage how many words it takes for the assistant to realize that there's been an interruption and for it to stop talking. Now, caveat to that, words like stop actually know anything that shows negative intent will automatically stop the assistant from speaking, but you're able to adjust it for just plain conversation, uh, you know, from one word to as many as you'd like. And then maximum duration, uh, if you don't want, you know, people who, who may, be, um, uh, may be malicious with your AI, you know, running the call too long or your assistant's just taking a long time with you know, lead, client, whatever it is, we can limit that time to a specific duration. After that duration, the assistant will say, thank you, have a nice day, and then hang up. So we're not eating into our minutes here. And then we have a voicemail message. If it goes to voicemail, this is what it'll say. And then in call message, so the message that the assistant will say if it needs to end the call. Next, we go to voice. Um, so along with the voice that we selected in the configure tab, we can also add background music or not. So it's not just an assistant in the void, whether we're calling inbound, outbound, 
on the phone or it's a web deployment via iframe, we can add some background sound here to uh, you know make it seem a little bit more realistic, like a like a human talking to someone. It's actually very fun uh, when I when I test and when I talk to this and you ask it a question uh, and the assistant's like, "What's your email?" and then you give it the email and then you just hear ambient typing noises. It makes it seem very human like. It's very great. Um, voice model. If you are um, working in a language that is non English, choose the multilingual. If not, uh, choose Turbo for this. And then we're able to add stability, clarity, and similarity, style exaggeration, and then we can optimize for latency. All here for the voice, granularly managing that. We run into prompt. We have a greeting message. This is the opening message, the prompt that goes along with this. The temperature, max tokens, and models. This model will be cheaper. This model will be better. This kind of limits how much the assistant is going to talk when it's its turn in the conversation. And then temperature controls the randomness. So the higher the temperature, the more random. The lower the temperature, the more deterministic it is going to be. So that's prompting. Pretty easy. We hand you all this stuff. As soon as you create your voice assistant, you'll see something very, very similar to this. You just fill in the blanks and you're good to go. Lastly is the log. So you'll see all the calls that come through, how much they cost, and the average talk time for all of it, as well as a recording. You can download the recording or read the full transcript. Um, so able to granularly um, you know, manage your logs, see everything that's going on, and any actions taken and summaries that'll, be, uh, that'll come off of these calls as well. So up top, we just see a breakdown of costs for web and phone. It's actually significantly cheaper than that, but it's just an estimate just in case latency or you know, LLM costs are high at that point. But um, that's the assistant, uh, the voice assistant type. Now, how do we get this thing out into the wild? So um, we've seen outbound number here, so we'll get to that in a minute. But if we want that assistant to take an inbound call to this number that we have purchased here, we go to the number and then we can add our voice assistant here, update the information. And then whenever this number is called, this assistant will pick up as the inbound assistant for this number. Um, the reason that it is divvied out from inbound and outbound just adds a little bit more granular, uh, granular management of client acquisition and the grander scheme of actually deploying these things. So we may have one assistant calling out and then when someone calls back to that number, maybe it was a voicemail, they get another assistant that is, is relevant for inbound calls rather than outbound. Um, so you're able to dynamically kind of play with how these assistants walk and talk, uh, things like that. So this is inbound, all you have to do is just link the assistant to the number here. When this number's called, that assistant will answer. All right, after inbound, we have outbound. So when we go to the assistant type, we can select our outbound number from our list of numbers. This is the number that the, when this is called to via the REST API or the workflow action, this is the number that this assistant will use when it's making an outbound call. So right now, until the workflow actions get approved, we're running with a REST API in which we have the snapshot for, it's gonna be included in the description and in the admin portal, um, inside of resources. So we'll go ahead and link this number up here. There's one thing we need to do. We need to go to our admin portal here. We need to go to our settings, integrations, and then let's go ahead and generate an agent-centric secret key. So this is going to be a API key through agent-centric to call to our REST API to make outbound calls, not only from high level, right, but from any platform that we're operating in um, to be able to make these calls via our assistance inside of high level. So this will be our key, and of course I'm gonna delete this key right after, but uh, don't share this key with anybody. This acts as your API secret key. All right, um, it's just a webhook, uh, a post request to the make call endpoint. The authorization is your API key that we generated here in the admin portal. And then we need the assistance ID, which is right here, we'll just copy that. And then you just throw that in here. And then we'll just link contact number to contact number raw because it needs to have the, uh, you know, like instead of 770, it'll be plus one 770. And then location ID is location ID and then contact name is contact name. Super, super simple. We have the snapshot in the description for you uh, for this actual webhook. So you really don't have to do anything. Just run a lead through your, uh, through your outbound call after you've assigned all of the numbers there. So that's how you make an outbound call. So now all you have to do is once you have this workflow set up, you just run your contacts through this workflow. It will queue up uh, calling these these uh, these contacts based on all the information we were given, and then you'll see the logs after the conversations have been completed and the uh, the actions or um, outcome of those calls in your logs here for that assistant. So that is inbound. That is outbound. Last is iframes. So this is web calling. So uh, we have a new deployment type. So rather than deploying inside of the CRM here 
will deploy inside of a widget. For this initial release, we have the, the voice orb. So you click on this. Let's go ahead and choose Haley, our assistant. Let's assign Haley to this assistant. Great. Um, now I have an embedded iframe code. I copy this code and then I can put this inside of my website. You see it has my white labeled domain here. Um, so if you're worried about a white labeled client saying, oh, is agent centric's domain gonna be in there? No, as long as you have your white labeled uh, domain set up in the admin portal, your iframe code here will have your stuff in it and point all to the right place and it'll look exactly like this right here. So you just copy the code, all right? And then we'll go into high level. All it is is a custom HTML JavaScript open the code editor, throw that in there, and then you can see what it looks like here. This is what it looks like, and then this is what it looks like on our website. So you can see two different perspectives from a dark background and a light background. So uh, these are really, really great because these are almost no obligation lead magnets in a way, um, you know, especially for the agency or maybe even a, um, you know, the local businesses that you're serving for someone to call in and talk to the assistant here live inside of the browser while it's collecting information. Really great lead magnet here really great like i said you can put it anywhere not not only for yours for prospecting and and lead generation but for your clients as well to be able to collect uh you know more actionable uh leads off of the website without them having to um at least explicitly give out contact information so hope that's helpful super exciting we're just getting started here so much cool stuff coming up thanks so much